What up Freediver fans, Jonathan and Eric here with you today and we are going to be talking about some fins. Uh, everything from snorkeling fins to mid-range, long blades, carbons, the whole nine yards. Let's do it. All the above. Let's get into it. All right, so first thing I want to tell you guys about is the SEAC Fuga. Uh, it's a snorkeling fin primarily used for topside swimming, snorkeling. Uh, you can obviously free dive with it. The cool thing about our sport is that you don't have to buy expensive stuff to get into the sport. It obviously makes it a little easier and better. Um, but these are great for if you're going to uh, any kind of long range trip where you're not spear fishing, you're just kind of snorkeling around with the family. Um, having a good old time. Or if you're just looking and, like you said, kind of get into it inexpensively. You don't need, you know, $500 fins to go free diving. Nope. I mean, there's, there's guys out there that are free diving several hundred feet with no fins. That's true. You know, <laughs> you should true. be able to dive pretty well with <laughs> any kind of fin. With some short fins. <laughs> no, that's a great point. Um, another thing I want to touch on with the, the short fins in general and the SEAC Fuga specifically is the foot pocket and how they fit your feet. So a lot of times you'll actually go down a size in most of the long blade fins, but in the snorkeling fins and the, the SEAC Fuga especially, you will, they're very true to size, right? So I am a 12 uh, shoe, 12 to 13 ish, um, and I wear a 12 uh, Fuga. So it's something that you don't really need to wear a sock with because they are super soft um, and you're probably not gonna be wearing them for five to seven hours at a time. Would that make um, these a Caribbean style foot pocket? They, that, that would be a Caribbean style foot pocket, nice. absolutely. <laughs> um, and so super comfortable, um, in my opinion, one of the better snorkeling fins out there. Um, one of the fun things that we do at Florida Freedivers is we get the ability to test out all of this equipment and from all the manufacturers. So we actually, how many snorkeling fins did we go through before we landed on this one? I mean, just since I've been here, probably three. At least. Yeah. And before Eric got here, we went, probably went through another three. So we've tried all the manufacturer fins, snorkeling category fins out there, and we landed on this one. We think it's the best bang for the buck. Um, it's a, actually a really good fin for what it is. For sure. It's got like good flex to it. It's not too stiff. It's not too soft. Um, it's somewhere right in the middle, which with any plastic fin, even like in the longer fins, it's definitely a balance between being too soft and the plastics, Absolutely. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to be somewhere in the middle. So like, for example, moving up into a little bit bigger fin, this is the SEAC Talent. Also another great kind of more of an intermediate fin, somewhere in between a snorkeling fin, somewhere in between a freediving fin but definitely a little bit stiffer setup. Mm -hmm, so this is gonna sure. be a fin that's gonna be probably better suited to lobstering, like maybe shallow shallower lobster, spear fishing, shallow spear that kind fishing, of thing. For sure. um, just because it is definitely a stiffer fin, it's gonna offer a little bit more power, but particularly with any plastic blade, as you get into a little bit stiffer setup, you actually gain a little bit more efficiency in a stiffer plastic fin versus a softer plastic and fin. And especially a short, stiff, plastic fin, right? Exactly. If you go for too long of a stiff plastic fin, well now you're losing efficiency because you can't muscle it. Exactly. Right? Um, and the reason I say that generally, like as you get into composites like these carbon fiber fins behind us, you want to go towards a softer setup. Um, but with the plastics, if you get too soft, they just become like a little Wet noodle. noodle flopping around yeah, in the water. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Which yeah, doesn't work. We could go somewhere else it with doesn't that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> no, so having that stiffer plastic is going to allow that, that fin to actually give you a little bit of propulsion and in turn efficiency as well. But there is a trade off there. You go, For sure. As you go stiffer, it's also going to be harder to kick. Yeah. So with the SEAC Talent, which is this one specifically that we're looking at, um, as Eric mentioned, it's a little bit stiffer of a blade. Great for that shallow water lobster or shallow water spearfishing. Um, the foot pocket is the same category as the Fuga in the sense that they fit very true to size, right? Also extremely soft, so you don't really need to wear a sock. Uh, you certainly can if that's something that you think you're going to be in the water for hours and hours or days at a time. Um, Probably but the, the real thin lycra socks work well with this style of foot pocket. Absolutely, absolutely. So having 
when you're buying these in the store or online, you wanna make sure that these guys are true to size. So if you are a size eight, go for the size eight fins. All right, so moving up into some of the actual long fin style fins, we have some of the Cressy Garas here. Now, Cressy makes a couple different models of the Garas. Um, the two that we carry, it's the two that we like the most, we find to be some of the more popular options. One is the Gara 3000. So the biggest difference between these two blades, one is gray, one is black. There you go, there's the big differences. <laughs> So obviously there's more differences than that, right? Um, starting with the 2000, um, this is a super popular scuba fin, right? A lot of guys actually want a full foot, uh, put full foot pocket fin uh, and then want something stiff. This is the fin for the scuba spear fisherman as far as using that style of free dive fin. Um, the thing that's different about it is the blade itself is actually shorter than most of your other long blades that are out there. So that's kind of an interesting fact, but it is super stiff. I mean, these guys will wear you out if you're not ready for them. Um, but if you are used to stiff fins, then these guys definitely will get the job done. Yeah, we just had a, a big storm come by. The swell was pretty good. I'm pretty sure I saw a couple guys surfing on these things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So yeah, so a, a great, uh, super comfortable foot pocket. Uh, both foot pockets are exactly the same between the 2000 and the 3000. Um, and these guys also fit very true to size. So again, if you're a size seven, you should get the size seven foot pockets, right? Um, but with the 3000, it's gonna be a little bit softer uh, than the 2000, and I'll let you talk a little bit about the 3000. Sure, so the 3000 Gara is actually one of my favorite plastic fins, which is, Interesting because it's actually one of the lower price point fins mm -hmm. out there too. They're is, super yeah. affordable and the reason I still like them so much is the stiffness. They are a little bit stiffer than what you might find in for example um, some of the other modular foot pockets. They generally have a really really soft plastic fin which is good. It makes that fin easy to kick. Um, however with the plastic blade because it doesn't have that snap or that pop that like a, a full composite fin has um, you lose a little bit of efficiency as you go with the softer fin. For sure. So I find that these Gar 3000s are like a really good balance of stiffness with not being real soft and not being too stiff. Like the 2000 is not necessarily an ideal free diving fin um, because it is it's definitely on the stiff, stiff side. Yeah. A lot of people love the stiffness and they sure. want that power. Sure. But for an efficiency standpoint, the 3000 is, is hard to beat, man, for a plastic fin. Yeah. It's an amazing price point and it's super effective. Absolutely, and they actually have this guy right here on the back, this black piece, this black molded in plastic piece, that's actually to help it with its rigidity, right? So it gives it a little bit more strength when you're bending that fin, but the cool thing is, is that it doesn't actually compromise the, uh, the bend, right? So a lot of fins that you'll see out there when you bend them, they only bend kind of halfway, uh, which in reality means that you're not using the full length of the fin. Mm -hmm. But even with this stability part in the back and you bend this blade, you're getting a full good curve uh, of that plastic blade, which means a lot, right? It means you can use the entire length of the blade as you're kicking through and when it's bending. For sure. We love the Garas, man. Absolutely. I love the 3000. A lot of people like the 2000 as well. Yeah. It's a really popular selling fin. Seems to be more the old school crowd. For sure, absolutely. Yeah, Definitely guys that, that have fin. been around for a little while. And the funny thing is that these fins have been around for a long time. Cressy's been making these for 30 years? Yeah, longer than I've been alive. <laughs> so <laughs> I've seen some Cressy fins that are, are older, older, than, older than you. Older than me. <laughs> Fair enough. So the, the thing is, is that they're tried and true, right? Like, yes, they're not the, the newest, coolest, flashiest thing out there. And Cressy's actually come out with some new, flashier style fins. And we tried them, but they're just not as good. We really like the uh, the Cressy 2000 and the Gara 3000. If it ain't um, broke, don't fix it. If it ain't right? broke, don't fix it. You're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. All right, so we've talked about our snorkeling fins. We've talked about our um, single piece plastic fins. Now we should get into our modular plastic fins. Um, so these guys are going to be a little bit different than the, the fins that we've talked about in the past, um, but definitely some key features that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you pay attention to when you're making your purchase, uh, or even just looking and doing your research. All right, so we're gonna start with the SEAC Modus here. This is again from the company SEAC. 
Um, they make an awesome product, really good price points as well. Absolutely. Um, great foot pockets. So we'll start off just explaining what the modular foot pocket, modular fin system is. Um, essentially, the foot pockets themselves can be removed from the blades so that you can either replace a foot pocket, replace a blade, switch to carbon blades, whatever, whatever it is that you want to do. Go up a size, go exactly. down a size. So this is what they look like without a uh, blade in them, right? So you have a, the actual foot pocket itself, plus two of these, what they call tendons coming out the end. Those actually lock on the sides of the blades. There's little T-channels for them. Um, but that's essentially the concept here. Gives you a little bit more versatility. If you do you know, damage a foot pocket or a blade, you have the ability to replace just the one part um, or upgrade in the future. You can start off in, you know, in a lower price point with the plastic blades. And then if you ever decide to upgrade, you already have the foot pockets, which the foot pockets are a big majority deal majority of the cost of like this fin oh absolutely right? so that's what i find to be the best reason why to buy a modular fin versus really any other type of fin right because now i can as you said i can jump into a you know 150 dollar 140 dollar pair of fins or 160 dollar pair of fins and have the ability in two months two years ten years to replace this plastic blade with some of these high-end blades behind us, right? So now, instead of me having to buy a whole new set of fins every time I want to upgrade or change or do anything different, I now have the option to keep my exact same comfortable foot pocket that I've taken the time to break in and make nice and uh, perfect for me, and I don't have to buy a new one, right? I can keep that same one and change blades. I can't tell you how many blades I've changed back and forth just trying out different manufacturers, different mm. stiffnesses, and kept the exact same pockets because I know they fit my feet and I know how they, how they work. You just hot swap them. Hot swap them, just going from <laughs> fin to fin. Um, so yeah, so with the SEAC, right, as Eric mentioned, it is totally modular. So you have this red piece right here in the middle that actually is screwed in. So it's kind of sandwiching the blade to the foot pocket. And then as you run down the tendons or the rails, you've got these clips on the side as well, on the left and right side to also keep that tendon attached to your plastic fiberglass or carbon fiber blade, uh, which is really nice. When choosing your foot pocket, something super important to pay attention to is how they fit your feet, right? So our pro tip is making sure that you, when you try on your foot pocket, there's two areas that I really want to pay attention to. The first area is where this logo is, right across the top of your foot. When you slide your foot in here, I want you to actually point your toe as if you were swimming, right? A lot of people stand up and try to see how it feels. The problem with the standing up thing is you don't do that in the water, right? So pointing your toe out like you're swimming and making sure that this piece across the top here is snug so that it's not going to go anywhere, but you don't want it to be so tight that you feel like someone's standing on your foot, right? If that's the case, 20 minutes, two hours in the water and you're gonna to wanna to rip these things off, right? So that's area number one that I want you guys to pay attention to. Area number two is the sides, right? So basically where these tendons meet the, uh, the inside, the left and right side of your foot, uh, that can be a area of pinching, right? So if your foot's too wide for the foot pocket, you might feel like that being pinched against your foot, like your foot's maybe in like a vice or something, which is a bad idea. That's um, not, yeah, that doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound good, no, no. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, so making sure that you kind of pay attention to that, kind of, again, point your toe, make sure that you have uh, held on the foot pocket on your foot for at least 30 seconds to a minute to kind of see how it feels and then you can pop those guys off and go from there. Now, they are soft foot pockets, but with long blade fins, uh, I definitely recommend using some sort of neoprene sock or booty or something like that, whether it's the super thin lycra ones or doing something a little bit thicker uh, to prevent those blisters. Um, and kind of, if you, you've gotten blisters before, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. No fun. Yeah, no fun at all, right? So Duct tape city. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. That's actually another really good pro tip. So if you forget your socks, right, or you're too cheap to buy some, um, duct tape is not a good answer, but it will get you through the trip. Mm. So finding that blister, whether it be on your toe, inside of your ankle, outside of your ankle, and just wrap that sucker. Yeah, in some it will sort make the difference in you having a really good trip and a really bad trip. <laughs> well, the booties will make a big difference in having a good trip or bad trip, but if you forget but them. You forget them, yeah. Yeah, exactly correct. Um, one thing I want to touch on with the SEAC is, you know, we're talking about sizing a little bit and that kind of thing. One cool thing with the SEAC blades, or particularly the SEAC pockets, 
is they make some very small sizes in the CI. Mm, good point. Um, so for long fins, this is actually one of the smaller size foot pockets out there. This guy goes all the way down to a three and a half to five. Um, so it's a really popular women's foot pocket. Mm -hmm. um, and also for younger kids that are you know getting, getting into, into their first, first set of long fins. So that's one cool thing with the SEAC. They also make, generally their pockets are gonna a be a little bit narrower, bit narrower yeah. than some of the other ones. Um, so in general, I've, we've found that they're definitely a, a popular women's foot pocket, yeah. um, as well as for the, for the younger. But talk about that sizing a little bit. That's a pretty key feature of key thought yeah. to know about the sizing. So what Jonathan is referring to, we were talking about some fins before, which, which are called like a Caribbean foot pocket. They're actually designed to be worn barefoot, so they're very true to size. Um, most of the other ones, including the, the Omer sitting here, the SEAC, they are designed to be worn with a sock. Is there an actual term for that? So I don't think so. It's just a cold water, right? Cold so water. most of these manufacturers, they manufacture their products to fit with a five millimeter sock, Which right? Which is pretty... That's thick. And that's like yeah. that. If you ever try on a five <laughs> millimeter anything, as far as wetsuit goes, it's not fun, right? No. You feel like the Michelin man and you're like all out like this. So <laughs> having bad. that five millimeter sock, once you put that sock Thank on... Goodness, we live in Florida. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, once you put that sock on, now you would be true to size. So if I wore a 910 shoe and I put on a five millimeter sock, I would fit a 910 pocket. But if I don't wear that five millimeter sock and I wear like the Lycra socks or the booties, the thin booties, I would probably go down a size. Like if I have a 910, I would probably wear a 7, 8, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of people get like super thrown off by, but it's because they are designed to be worn with a thicker booty. Yeah, exactly. And it does, I see a lot of people go straight into grabbing the one off the shelf that their, their shoe size is, doesn't fit them. And you're like, well, I'm not gonna go down a size. That's not yeah. a size that I wear. Yeah. And they end up like looking at different fins and end up in picking something that's not right for them. So right. yeah, I find that if I haven't directly worked with a customer that you gotta educate kind of browsing people. Yeah, themselves, um, I have to come over and Make sure they get the right one. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> if that means you're going in a three and a half, that means you're going in a three and a half. <laughs> hey, I mean, forget the numbers, right? Um, all right, so now let's go into the Omer Stingray. With the, uh, the plastic fins, right, these guys are pretty soft. Um, as Eric mentioned er on the earlier segment, we kind of want to have a little bit of a stiffer blade when it comes to our plastic fins. Um, but to get into it, these guys are phenomenal pockets. What makes this fin a phenomenal. good fin Phenomenal um, is that they are awesome pockets, super comfortable. I've actually worn the Stingray pockets for probably almost six years or so. I'm pretty sure um, everybody who's been everybody spear fishing has worn, worn a pair of Stingray pockets. pockets yeah, They're probably the single most popular foot pocket that's ever been made. You were probably right, yeah. Because they've mostly because they've been around and for like long known time. for a long period of time. Absolutely. And they also just they fit. They fit a lot much of people, everyone. man. They fit a lot of people. They fit any blades you want to put in them. Just a, it's just versatile. It's pretty much an industry, super, industry standard. Yeah, absolutely. So by far, um, as far as the uh, modus, where Eric talked about being a little bit narrower, the Stingray we found is a little bit wider, so it fits those guys that have kind of those wide, flat feet. Uh, fits them really well. It's a super sturdy foot pocket too, right? So one of the things that I like to look at is how sturdy the heel of the pocket is. And why I do that is to ensure that as I'm kicking, I'm getting a good, strong uh, push forward, right? So the way I like to describe it is if I have a soft heel or even an open heel, like a lot of the scuba fins, it's like trying to jump really high on sand, right? You just don't get enough like oomph as you go up, right? The oomph. The oomph, yeah. <laughs> but following. once you have a, a closed heel fin that has a good sturdy base, now you're jumping really high on a solid platform. So like, who doesn't want to jump high? Right, right. Or kick well. Whatever it is. So the test that I like to Jumping. use is I grab the, uh, the pocket with the inside of my hand and then I put my heel of my hand on the heel of the pocket and I hold this guy up and it should actually hold its own weight uh, by me holding it, right? So if I bounce it around, it should stay. The SEAC does the exact same thing, right? So that's what we're looking for as far as a good pocket uh, and a good sturdy base. They actually make other little products that you can slide into the foot pocket that has like a hard plastic that 
helps give a little bit more support, uh, which is pretty cool as well. Those work really well. And they, they do work really well, especially if you're in like a half size. Uh, so if you're a size eight and a half, but they only have a 910, which is the, what the Stingray is, um, you can slide that guy in there, take up a half size, wear a sock, and now you're fitting into that 910 perfectly. Sweet. So yeah, that's our Homer Stingrays. That's our SEAC Modus. Uh, again, phenomenal staple products in the long blade category as far as our modular fins go. Hopefully this was super helpful to you guys and uh, hopefully you guys can make informed, good decisions whether you're buying them in the store or on the website. All right. The fun stuff. We're looking at some exciting things Yeah. Here. Stuff that everybody wants Absolutely. to get. Absolutely. <laughs> and talk about. And talk about. So what we have here are all composite options for your freediving fins. Which is commonly misconcepted. Actually, technically the plastics are composites too, but ah, we're not going to get into that now. <laughs> um, but essentially what we have here, the two main composite style fins that most people are referring to are either a fiberglass blade or a carbon blade like these two. Or a carbon blend. Or carbon blend. All right, so where do you want to start? You want to go carbon and then work our way down? Or no, go we'll fiberglass? Start with fiberglass. All right, sounds good. So a lot of people ask about whole camo thing and if it's worth it, blah, blah, blah. Well, the coolest thing that I've found out there as far as a camo goes is a clear fin. So you can see that this guy <laughs> is a completely clear fiberglass fin. Uh, it's made by a company, Black Tech. Um, there used to be a plastic fin way back in the day that was clear by Omer. Um, unfortunately, it broke all the time. Yeah, they would just um, explode for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of a long gap before that came back into the industry. And Black Tech, in my opinion, has done a phenomenal job of making this thing beautiful. I mean, it is, it's clear, right? Uh, which is really cool. Uh, and I'll actually show a picture uh, on the video here that shows me in the water and it looks like I don't even have any fins on. Like, it's really, really cool. Uh, looks good in pictures, looks good on Instagram. But uh, the besides looking cool, I think this is probably one of my favorite fiberglass fins that we've ever kicked. I would go even farther. What? To say it's probably one of my favorite blades on the market. Get out of here. Even Above carbons? Even compared to a lot of carbons. Um, it's a big deal. There's definitely some carbon blades out there that perform better. Okay. I mean, that's just the nature of the of beast, course. right? But in my opinion, those blades kick better than a lot of the low-end carbons I've, I've used. Okay. Or tried, at least. Okay, well, you heard it here from Eric. <laughs> um, so it's, a really, it's a really nice blade. They're absolutely. manufactured extremely well. The quality of manufacturing is second to none. They literally as got nothing to hide here, right? Yeah, really. <laughs> um, but what's cool about them, most fiberglass blades are built with a pretty antiquated manufacturing process, mm. right? like press forming and that sure. kind of thing. Sure. Um, Black Tech is one of the only ones using a pre-preg fiberglass to make the fiberglass Which blades. Which is unheard of. Yeah, so right. the, the pre-preg is a word you hear a lot with carbon fiber and that kind of thing. It stands for pre-impregnated fiber, where the epoxy is manufactured straight into the fabric itself. So it's all one piece you can get, not necessarily one piece, it's all one mixture, mixture? straight sure. off the sure. bat. Um, and they can get really, really exact ratios as far as how much fiber and how much epoxy is going into the product, which is essential for having a really high-end yeah. composite product. So for the non-nerds out there, that basically <laughs> just means that it's an awesome product, it's right? It's really um, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, and what we're looking for in any blades, right, is that when we bend the blade, that it's a constant curve, right? We don't want to see that when we bend the fin that there's this kind of like, difference in the movement of the blade. You want to be able to start from one side, start from the other, bend it together, and it's pretty much exactly the same across the board. A lot of people have talked about this like progressive uh, curve and progressive bend. I'm not a huge fan of that because at that point now I'm having to kick, I'm not being able to use the length of my blade in the stiffness that I chose, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to choose a soft fin, I want it to be soft from here all the way to here. Now, in different areas of the world, that may be a little bit different, but for the type of diving that we do here in Florida, that's what we want, right? This is what we choose and how we like it. Um, so, really awesome um, product, the Black Tech Clear uh, Ice Blades. Super good looking, as well as extremely functional. This is also a very hard blade to find. 
It's true. But you can find them here at Florida Freedivers. That's true. That's true. Either <laughs> in store or online. All right. So the next one that we're going to talk about is our signature Florida Freedivers blade. Um, this is probably one of the most popular blades out there. Obviously, it's got our name on it, so we're a little biased. But by far, I would say one of the toughest blades out there. Very tough. And that's kind of the nature of fiberglass as well. It's a super durable material, handles impact really well, handles you know pressure very well, like tensile strength, all that is really, really nice on, on fiberglass. So you can beat crap out of these things. You can beat the crap out of these things. So like, just kind of to give you a show, <laughs> um, you can, I mean, you can take these things and you can kick the reef, you can press off the bottom, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff and they will take it. They'll hold up, they're awesome. Uh, these blades uh, come from South Africa and they make some hardy stuff out in South Africa. If you've ever seen the diving out there, it's gnarly. Those guys are, those guys are serious. Um, they're beach diving from cliffs. Right? <laughs> and going out in like six meter seas. Like yeah. It's pretty yeah. insane. Which is nothing. Which is nothing to them. Uh, so we have these, uh, this fin in three different colors. We've got it in black, we've got it in a blue camo, as well as a green camo, and you can see all of those in the link uh, on the website. Um, but again, super, super durable fin, a fantastic move if you're going from a uh, plastic fin into your first fiberglass fin. Uh, these guys are a really good price point, so make sure that you check those out. Like I said, it's a great first step, right? It's giving you tons of snap uh, and making sure that you're propelling yourself forward with a great amount of efficiency, as well as you can treat them just like your plastics. You can throw them around, you can beat them up, and they're gonna hold up and withstand everything you can throw at them. Yeah, so getting into the carbons a little bit, we can. I guess we'll start a little bit with comparing fiberglass to carbon. Mm -hmm. um, so like you were just talking about the snap, right? Yeah. So that's what you're really, the biggest difference in moving to a composite fin is that they are, I, I, the word snap doesn't really describe it for me. I don't really know how to describe it. I'll, I'll use like the rebound of the fin, okay. right? So how, how likely that fin is to return to its original position once you bend it. And how quickly. And how quickly, yeah, right. for sure. So. And you were saying how you want to make sure you're bending that entire fin. All that's essential for getting the most rebound from that fin. And all that means, every time you kick that fin, it wants to pop straight back to its original position. So as you're going through your kick cycles, right, the blade is bending every time. Every time you go to switch directions, so you get to the top of your kick cycle, that blade is fully bent out and you switch directions. But right before you switch directions, that blade pops out and moves a bunch of extra water as you switch to the next direction and that's which where essentially moves you forward yeah right that's how you're being moved forward you're getting by bending the returned fin. work for the work that you're putting into the fin absolutely um which has a lot to do with stiffness we can get into that in a little bit or probably in another video, probably <laughs> another video. <laughs> um so that rebound or that snap or pop or whatever you want to call it is where your efficiency comes from and moving into a carbon fiber blade that's going to give you the most amount of snap yeah, pop. snap. We're sticking to snap. Yeah, so as you get into them, that wasn't a very good pop. That was a good one. Jeez. <laughs> so as you get into the carbons, carbon has a much faster rebound. It's a stiffer material. Don't get that confused with the blades themselves being stiffer. Correct. By stiffer material, I mean that they want to return back to their original position faster. much more than other materials. Um, so like, for example, these Moana carbons, which are probably one of my favorite blades one of right our now. favorites yeah in the industry right yeah now. they make a phenomenal product really really high-end carbon really high-end manufacturing process but not a high-end price but not a super high-end price which I mean, was they're, a, they're not they're expensive cheap. for sure <laughs> but it's when you compare the moanas by headhunter by all the other carbons that are out there these guys are a phenomenal product and i've used the word phenomenal like three times now um, but it's a great, great product for an awesome price if you're looking to get into carbons. Yeah, for what you're getting versus some of the other, I hate to call them lower end products, but the, at the end of the day, there are definitely some lower end products out there. Um, for what you're getting in comparison, it's, it's a no brainer. It's a no comparison. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that kind of leads us into the next one, which yeah, is absolutely. a pretty unique product from Divar. So a Negra is just a completely different material from carbon. Um, Essentially, it's similar to fiberglass in that it has extremely high impact resistance. Um, so 
basically what that means is you're getting a performance similar to fiberglass out of the Enegra, which is why they blend it with carbon so you can get that carbon performance, mm -hmm. so you get the pop of the carbon, but the impact resistance of that Enegra material. Absolutely. So Enegra is just, they use it to build stronger, whitewater kayaks. Stronger like, than fiberglass. Oh, yo, much stronger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I just want to make sure I make that distinction, right? <laughs> that a Negra is going to be stronger than fiberglass. So you take a material that's stronger than fiberglass that you can beat up and keep going and mix it with a performance enhanced carbon fiber. Now we're talking about like the ultimate fin that you can take a traditional, you know, carbon fin. You would probably be super scared to do something like this to. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's my shop. I can do what I want. And you can bend the heck out of these fins and they do the work, right? Which is really, really cool. Divar makes some awesome products and really excited about them having this Negra carbon blend. Uh, I've been kicking these for a little while now uh, in the mix of all my other fins. Yeah. And uh, I keep coming back to these. I really, really like the Divar Negras. Uh, a lot. They do a good job. They definitely have a unique feel. It's a very unique product. It is definitely different kick. You're absolutely right. There's nothing else on the market like these, which is pretty cool in my opinion. It's really cool, yeah. And the Negra in itself, like when I when I first heard about these blades, I had no idea what a Negra was and I started doing a bunch of research on a Negra. Yeah. It is a pretty incredible product. It's Do you think we'll see more of the Negra throughout the dive industry? Um maybe maybe in some like it's expensive, custom stuff. Which is the it's Versus very expensive. I don't think we're going to see much of it aside from what Divar makes. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We are super excited to have all of this information presented to you guys. Um, it's a ton of stuff. Hopefully, it teaches you something and gives you a uh, better purchase, a better education. And um, hopefully, you guys can like and subscribe to our channel and watch this video. Um, we'll leave some comments below talking to our resident nerd, Eric, mm. on the, uh, the gear that you nerd out on the most, right? Yeah. Let me know your thoughts on composites. Ooh, all right. That's going to be a big one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so for our promo code today, we're going to be giving you guys a discount on our Florida Freediver blades. And what's our coupon code going to be? Phenomenal. Fin nominal? Fin oh, nominal. Oh man, all right. Fin nominal it is. <laughs> so um, we look forward to uh, again hearing you guys' comments. And uh, again, we'll see you next time.